coming to you from Book Riot, and today I'm really excited to walk you through the 2022 reading log. So first off, um, when you click on the link to access the log, it's going to take you to this Google Sheets. Um, this will be locked so you can't edit it, but what you'll want to do is come up here and click File, make a copy. This little pop-up will come up. You have to be logged into your own Google account. Um, but then you can change the name and then you hit OK and it will save it to your drive and open it up in a new tab so you can edit it. Um, so I've already done that. So I'm just going to hit close and I'm going to show you the sample that I've created. So um, we'll get over to the right tab here. The sample, here we are. Um, as you can see, I've filled out a few different um, books just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, it looks very similar to last year's. Um, but I'm going to walk you through each of the um, tracking points in the log, show you the stats, show you the charts, show you this year's Read Harder Challenge, and then um, the book spending log. And then I'll walk you through how to adjust and edit and customize it to your own liking. So first off, pretty straightforward. We've got title, author, artist slash narrator, publisher, pub date, finish and start date. Um, this is a drop down menu for if you did not finish a book. You can track page length, audiobook length, format is just print, digital, audio. Um, we have fiction slash nonfiction as an option. We have form, which is like poetry, prose, comics, essays. New this year is picture books, so you can track your picture books. We also have genre, these are some pretty general genres. Um, but again, this is all customizable, so you can always either get more specific in your genres or just keep it sort of basic. Audience is adult, children's and middle grade or young adult. Um, we've got um, whether or not something it has um, representation from people of color. So that is like author, artist, protagonist or both. Ditto LGBTQIA. And then new this year is this trans drop down menu, um, which looks like the same as the POC and LGBTQIA. Now you might be wondering why is trans separate? They follow under the same umbrella as LGBTQIA, which is true. Um, the reason why I have a separate um, column for tracking trans representation is because I've gotten a lot of feedback from both um, fellow book write, um, you know, staff and also people in the general reading community that they would like to have a way to track um, trans representation in their own reading, um, which I think is awesome. You know, there's so many amazing books um, with trans representation and written by trans authors coming out these days that I think it's a great thing to, you know, track that so you can also make a point to read more of it. Um, so the easiest way that I saw to do that was to just make it its own designation on this reading log spreadsheet because I didn't want to get into like, you know, just nitpicking about like the different um, representations and um, all that under LGBTQIA because um, the point of this isn't to like police anyone's identity. Um, if somebody, if an author self-identifies, you can put it on the sheet, great. If they don't, like, I personally don't, you know, feel like I have to go and find something out about somebody that they don't willingly share. So, um, you know, this is really just, you know, if there's information that's publicly available and you happen to see it and you want to put it on this tracker, great. Um, so that is why trans is, is separate. Um, because we also have its own, um, you know, stats and chart for that. Um, for creator gender, we have male, female. This M slash F is for if you have a piece of work that both a male and a female creator worked on. Um, this way they are both counted. We have non-binary. Um, and the reason this is separate from trans is because not all people who are non-binary identify as trans. Um, some do, some don't. Um, this other gender is if there is a other gender representation that somebody discloses, um, you can put it under other or I can show you later down in this video how to actually add that to this drop down menu. Um, new this year is also disability representation because that's important. Um, we have just a check for if it's a reread or not. Same for translation. And then new this year, because those of you who read a lot in translation, 
wanted a way to track original language, there's a way to do that. Nation of origin, you can, you know, fill this out however you want to. I know some people do like author's nation of origin. I tend to use it just in like what country was the book originally published in. But however you want to use it is up to you. Book source. So where did you get the book? Um, and I, the reason I distinguish between something that was purchased this year versus something that you already own on your TBR is because I am trying to read more of the books that I have purchased over the last few years. And I like to kind of have that split designation. Reason for reading, pretty basic in general. Um, it's going to give you an average of how many days you spent reading the book and how many pages per day. Again, these are averages, um, not like actual real time, you know, pages per day. Um, and then same with time per day, you can do stars. We have half stars, that's pretty cool. This column is for read harder, which I will show you in a second, and then your notes. Um, so yeah, that is the reading log tab. Then we're gonna hop on over to the stats tab. And this is where we have all of the wonderful computing power. So I know that like sometimes this is a lot of numbers, um, which is understandable. Don't get too freaked. I do just wanna make a couple quick points about this page before moving on which is that this total red is probably the number that a lot of people would like to reference. And this number is calculated based on how many finished dates you have filled out. So I have six books that I have marked as finished and that is how I have the number six. A lot of times when people first start filling out this chart, um, you know, they'll, they'll start filling it out but they haven't finished the book yet. And so therefore it's not counted as a book read. And basically this is like the number that a lot of these stats hinge upon. So I get a lot of like frantic emails, like it's not working. And it's like, no, it is working. You just have to actually finish a book for it to be count as read for it to generate a lot of these stats. So just know that um, going in. Um, one other quick thing, cause you're probably wondering why this is a negative number. This um, calculates the average pages per day that you have read based on like the actual day it is in 2022. Um, so because I'm actually recording this in 2021, that's why it's a negative number. Um, if it were 2022, it would be a positive number. And then also that number kind of becomes useless once 2022 is over, but sometimes it's interesting. People like to be like, okay, I was averaging 35 pages a day in January and now it's July and I'm averaging only 20 pages per day. Um, I don't know, maybe that's interesting to you. Um, so yeah, this again, this is a lot of stats and I will um, come back to this when I show you how to edit some um, fields and actually generate the stats. Um, we've got charts for those of us who are a bit more visual. So these charts just kind of give you a fun, colorful representation of your reading stats. I find myself looking at these for certain things like percentages more often than, um, you know, like the actual numbers. Oh no, my computer's frozen. This is not good. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, Read Harder Challenge. Um, so this has already been filled out with the 2022 Read Harder Challenge which is really cool. Um, it's a really great challenge that we put out every year. This year's is gonna be awesome. So, hey, you could do just fill out title author all by yourself, but you don't have to. So if we're gonna hop over back here to the reading log, and I'm looking at my books read this year and I'm thinking, okay, what counts for the Read Harder Challenge? White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson will count because it is a horror novel. Um, by a black indigenous person of color, which is challenge number, let's see, read a horror novel by a BIPOC author. So that's challenge number 19. So when doing this, you're gonna want to look at the challenge number, not the column or row number. Um, so it's 19, we're gonna remember that. We're gonna hop back over to the reading log. We're gonna go all the way over to the end with this read harder column 
And since it was for challenge number 19, I'm just gonna put in 19. And then if I hop back over to Read Harder, boom, it fills in it automatically, which is pretty cool. And then there's like a little notes column here. And I think this is fun. So like, if you have some ideas of books that you wanna read, you can pop them in the notes, however you wanna use that. Okay, finally, I'm gonna show you the book spending log. So the book spending log is basically for you to track your book spending, which <laughs> depending on, you know, your values and your budget is maybe a good or a bad thing. Um, I know that some of us like to remain in ignorant bliss when it comes to how much money we spend on books. I like to keep track of it because I work in books and I can count it as a business expense on my taxes. Um, but this is also a really good way if you want to like see how many of the books that you are buying each year that you're actually reading or if you want to stay on budget. So I just pretended that I read Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour. This is something I'm definitely going to pre-order. Um, format, hardcover, um, indie, you know, but you can add from all the, you know, choose from all of these. Um, you can also change these up so that um, you have like your specific indie bookstores that you shop at, um, just an idea. Um, the cost, the reason for purchase, and then this is a fun way of tracking whether or not you've read it. So um, if I've read it, then you know it'll show up here as total purchase, total read. Um, but if I haven't read it yet, you know, there's that. Um, so, and then it'll show your total spending right up here. So that's just kind of a fun thing um, that you can take or leave. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna show you what it's like to actually fill out this. Um, so we're gonna pretend, I mean, not pretend, because I did read this book, but let's pretend that I read it in 2022, The Natural Mother of the Child, which is a great memoir, I highly recommend. And it's by Chris Malcolm Belk. Um, I read it in print, so no artist or narrator. It's by Counterpoint Press. Um, I think it came out in June 2021 um, and let's pretend that I started it on January 11th, 2022 and I finished it on January 14th, 2022. Oops, I'm trying to remember how to spell January. There we go. Okay. Um, I don't remember how many pages it was. Let's just say it was... 325 and I read it in print and it is nonfiction. It is prose. It is a memoir slash bio. It is for adult audiences. Um, Chris is not a person of color, but he is a member of the LGBTQIA community. And this is kind of funny because it's like author, artist, and protagonist. For memoirs, I always choose both because the author artist is the protagonist and trans he is trans and the memoir is is non-binary um you know parenthood but um i believe he identifies as male now because he uses he him pronouns so i mean i guess you could go either way because it's in the title i'm just gonna hit non-binary so i can also show you um how that adds different um, stat in the pie chart, um, no disability rep, um, not a translation, nation of origin is the U.S., the book source, it was a gift, the reason for reading, it was fun, it was a really great memoir. All right, and then I'm going to give it five stars because it was an amazing read. And oh, yes, I just remembered it counts for um a read harder challenge it is challenge number 17 so i come back over here fill out challenge number 17 um best book of the year so that's kind of how i would use the chart um and yeah it's pretty straightforward so um you can see here that adding more representation and having finished this book changes up our stats in real time. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to edit. Now let's say 
that you wanted to change up the genres. So I have revolution in our time under general nonfiction, but maybe you want to add a history designation. So you're just going to click on this so it's highlighted. And then you're going to come up here to data and then come down to data validation. And when you have a drop down menu, you can list everything right here and they have to be separated by commas, but no spaces. So I would add comma history, making sure that I don't put a space in there. And you can put as many different genres as you like. One important thing though, to make sure that this option is in every column, you're gonna come up here to the range. And so the cell is um, 03, and then you're going to do colon, and then O. So it counts everything in O. And then you're gonna hit save. So now, if I come down here, history is down at the bottom. It will is an option for every other book, but then I can come back up here and I can do history. So the only problem with that is that when you come over to stats, when we come down to genre, history is not counted because we don't have history down here as a designation. However, we can add that. So we're gonna add history. So the way you're gonna do this is it's really helpful to kind of look at the code gobbly gook that's in others. So this is kind of what this looks like where it's a count if function. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's counting everything in the O column if it's labeled, you know, whatever's in these quotation marks. So what I would do is I would just copy that and then I would paste that right down here for history. But then we're going to just replace this business self-help with history. And you have to make sure that whatever you're putting in here and these quotation marks matches exactly what you put in the drop-down menu on the other tab. Then you click away and boom, it counts it. Um, but you still don't have the percentages because that's a different function. So again, I would just pop up here. That's the, um, that's a little code thing that we're gonna be grabbing. I'm gonna copy it and then paste it. But then we have to change it up because this is counting E61 and we need it to count E62. So I would just pop up over here, E62, hit enter. Okay, and then this is a good example of showing how, um, you know, sometimes the numbers aren't presented in the way we want them to. That's okay, this is really easy to fix. You would just click that cell and then you'd come up here to this one, two, three, more formats, click on that, and then we want it in percentages, boom. So that is how you would add a genre. This works for reason for reading, source. Um, it works for nation of origin or original language. Basically that function that I did, you would do the same thing over here where anything that has like a lot of different, oops, not that, but like anything that has a lot of different um, options for your drop down menu, you would come up to the top, click on that, come up to data, data validation, make sure that you're getting the entire column by putting in a colon and then whatever that column um, label is. And then you would come down here, add another option, separate with commas, not spaces, hit save. It would add it to your drop down menu. Then you'd come over to stats and then you would, I would just add it to the bottom. This is kind of why I have nation of origin and original language off to the side here. This is also why I have, um, you know, genre way down here, as well as reason for reading and source. So if you want to add to these, you have the space to do that. Um, if you want to shift any of these around, you certainly can, I would say, <laughs> proceed with caution and make sure that you're not messing things up. But if you wanted to add a book source, that's totally doable. What you would do is just draw a box all the way around here, and then you are going to cut. So that's, um, I'm on a Mac, so it'd be Command X. Whoops, no, oh, excuse me. I just did Command Z. Command X, and then if you wanted to bump it down a couple notches, you just do like that. And that was, I just pasted it down. Um, so if you move everything 
reboot, um, you know, cutting and pasting, not copy paste, but cutting and pasting, it will maintain all of the coding in here so you don't have to redo those, um, which is very nice. So then you can just add a few more sources. And um, let's see, over here in the book spending log, um, slightly different process, but same sort of thing, where if you're gonna add, which you can totally do, you just come up here, do that data, data validation, add, um, to get your stats on the charts, you actually have to come over here, and I have hidden, as you can see, some statistics, and, um, this is where I have listed all of the different retail sources. So you could add your retail source, you know, copy this up here, this countif function, paste it, swap out what's ever in the quotation marks, do your, your percentages, and you can add to your, um, you know, your, your retail source. So every time you do that, the charts should pick it up and pull it over. Um, so like, let's look at genre. See, yep, it did it. Um, Sheets is smarter than you or me. That's all I can say because I did not tell it to count history, but I just added it down at the bottom. I thought we changed that. Did I not change that? Percent. All right, there we go. I just added that to the bottom and the chart picked it up and just added it right here, which is pretty cool. Um, if the chart ever doesn't do that and you're really frustrated, don't worry. Just click on the chart and click these um, three buttons right here. And then you're gonna hit edit and it's gonna bring it up. And so value, if you just click on this, oops, sorry, click on the, um, why is this? Okay. So if you click on the stats value, you can change this and basically, stats refers to which tab and then this range refers to like what numbers are we counting so e48 to e62 is you know the numbers e48 to e62 and then when you pop back over here oh i have to bring this back up again sorry edit chart and then the label is d48 to d62 so that's like the late actual label of the pie chart and then you come back over here, D48 to D62. So that's how you would edit the pie chart. Um, I think it's fairly straightforward. However, if you ever have any issues, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out and chat with me. Um, I can always be reached at tirza at riotnewmedia.com. I'm happy to help. And, you know, just feel free to go wild. Um, you know, edit this up, change as much as you want. I know people who, you know, I always try to change different colors just, you know, because I think it's fun. And um, I also like having different colors for different years. It helps keep all of the logs straight in my head. Um, but I know that people may not be jiving with blue and green. So change it up. There's a lot of, um, you know, different um, themes that you can pick. You can change the type. You can change the font. Um you know, just make it your own. And uh, hopefully if it's something that, you know, you are excited to use, you will actually use it. Um, but all that said, if this feels like really overwhelming for you and you just like do not want this level of, um, you know, tracking power, this year I have um, put out a simplified version and that is also available on the website. And so it'd be the same deal, you know, you just hit file, make a copy. This is a very simple version of the log that has just title, author, artist net slash narrator, finish date, because again, that finish date is pretty important for counting a book as read and that powers a lot of our stats. DNF, um, page and length, format, genre, fiction, not slash nonfiction genre. And then I did keep our sort of diversity tracking um, just because I think that's important. Um, if you don't wanna use it and you don't have to, you can just delete all these columns for all I care. Um, and then star rating and then the read harder. So if you come over here, the stats page is much simplified. Um, and you can 
can, you know, still change it up and add your different genres. Um, it looks like, yeah, that's pretty much the only thing you might want to add to is the genres because everything else has been greatly simplified. We still have our charts. These look funky and we get, you know, nothing going on because I don't have anything filled out in this. You still have your read harder challenge. If you don't want to do the read harder challenge though, you can always just delete that um, and then delete the column in the reading log, it doesn't matter. And then I have the simple book spending log. So that is the simplified version. I hope that no matter what version you read, um, you will enjoy using this log. And you know, I love hearing from people who use the log and I love seeing like screenshots and what they've done. I'm always looking to improve the log. So if you have a tip or trick, feel free to drop me a line. Um, but in the meantime, happy reading and thanks so much for listening. Have a wonderful bookish year.